Begin by opening Lix and creating a new document using File New. One of the first tasks is to set up the document you want to produce. This is something that is usually done once, and then new documents can be created from an existing document, or you can save a blank template. There are many settings for Lix documents. The first is the document class. This is where the type of document is declared. The type affects the available structural items. In most cases, articles should be chosen for the class. Other useful classes include Book, Report, and Presentation Beamer. Books and Reports allow for chapters, which articles do not have. The Report class is usually the correct format for producing a thesis. The Document Class Settings pane also allows for custom options to be passed to LaTeX. For now, we can leave these blank. The next tab is the Modules tab. Modules extend Core Lix to allow for more features. The most useful for writing technical articles are the Theorems AMS and Theorem AMS Extended, which provide environments for theorems, lemmas, proofs, and algorithms. We will see more about these environments in the lesson on mathematics. Local layout is not especially important, so switch to fonts. Fonts allows the default font to be set for each font type in LaTeX. Unlike Microsoft Word, where a document can have hundreds of fonts, LaTeX documents typically have three font types, Roman or Serif, Sans Serif, and Typewriter. Setting these determines which fonts will be used throughout the document. LaTeX also uses a model where fonts are scaled up and down, and so the base size can also be set. For now, leave these settings as they are. The text layout pane allows for changes in indentation and line spacing. For working papers and drafts, one half is better than the default, so change this setting. The page layout tab allows for more changes. In general, these settings are fine. By default, LaTeX uses very large margins. I change these in the page margins pane to allow for more text per page. In this example, I have set all margins to one inch. In practice, I usually set margins to 20 millimeters for left and right and 33 millimeters for top and bottom. The language pane allows the default language to be set. If writing in a language other than English, it is important to correctly set this. It is also possible to specify regional variants such as English UK or English USA. Colors and numbering are not usually important to change. The bibliography pane contains one important setting which needs to be changed when writing papers in social sciences. It is important that NatBib is selected to produce citations which take the form author year. If you fail to change this setting, citations will appear as numbers, which is common in other fields such as engineering. Indexes can be skipped, and so switch to the PDF properties pane. This allows the package hyperref to be used. Hyperref produces links in the document so that references in the text link to entries in the bibliography, or cross-references link to equations. This is optional since some find it distracting. In the Math Options pane, the final two packages can usually be excluded, although this is not essential. Figure placement allows for customization of the default figure options, although these are usually fine. The Listings pane allows for setting options for the Listings package, which produces syntax-highlighted, well-formatted code for some common languages such as C, Java, Python, or MATLAB. The Bullets panel allows the bullets to be changed for levels 1 through 4. Again, these are usually fine. Finally, branches, output, and LaTeX preamble can be skipped. The LaTeX preamble allows for packages which are not standard in Lix to be loaded, and will be revisited later when the tutorial demonstrates the use of custom LaTeX. Now that the document has been set up, we can add some content. The small box at the top left, which currently says Standard, is one of the most important elements in the Lix interface. Lix works by defining text into structured blocks. There are many options on this list, including formatting blocks such as section or subsection, title elements, and blocks useful in technical papers such as theorem. One important shortcut to using this list is that it supports filtering by typing. For example, if you click on the list and then type SEC, you will only see the elements which contain SEC, 
This makes filtering the list quick and painless. Note that standard is the usual mode for entering unformatted text. Start by selecting title from the list and then entering a title. When finished, be sure to hit enter to drop down to a new line. Next, select author and enter your name. Then select date and enter the date. If you want a document which always shows the latest date when it is compiled, you need to hit Ctrl L and then type backslash today. This is a custom LaTeX command which inserts the current date on the computer. Now insert a section. After entering the section, hit enter which will return the mode to standard which is used for usual text. Next create a subsection and then a sub subsection in the same manner. Finally, a paragraph can be created. Paragraphs are not usually encountered in academic papers or theses and are not numbered, unlike sections. A large number of formatting elements can be inserted, such as a table of contents or lists of figures or tables. These can be inserted using the menu Insert and then List slash Talk. An appendix can be added using document, start appendix here. Appendices use sections which have letters instead of numbers, and so the section created after the start of the appendix appears differently. Bibliography can be inserted using Insert List Talk. I've provided a bibtech file, example.bib. Select this file and set the style to AGSM. Note that bibliographies aren't important and so I have a dedicated lesson later in the series. This concludes the lesson. 
The next we'll look at entering and formatting standard text.